Rub up your engines! Nox Nosferatu. Hey, Scotty, what are younger people burying themselves in debt for new cars? Why are they doing it? People are young. Sometimes they're young and foolish. I was young and foolish. Now I'm old and foolish. But I never spent that much money on cars because I think it's stupid. I started working as a mechanic when I was 14. My entire life of my own personal cars, I spent less than $7,000 total. I've been driving for, you know, 50 freaking years. So <laughs> I don't waste my money on cars. But people see something. And they want something fancy, so they go into debt. But a worse debt, as far as I'm concerned, is young people that are going into debt at college. I've seen people with half a million dollars debt for getting a four-year degree. You're never going to break even on that one. Education scam that they're trying to charge everybody all this money for, it's just ridiculous. That's the thing that really needs changing in this country. Absolutely ridiculous the money that people are spending for these four-year degrees that really don't mean anything at all. It's sad, but you know, it's gotten to that money point. That, that's the way that things go. Cars are a lot less than that. <laughs> Unless you're going out and buying, you know, Ferraris and Lamborghinis, even then they're cheaper than a college degree at a fancy university these days. Unami says, Scotty, what should I do if my wheel's jammed? Okay, if your wheel's locked up, it's locked up for a reason. Normally it means that your brakes are locked. So what you do is first jack up the car, see which wheel it is. Now if it's all the wheels, it could be a central thing like your brake master cylinder stuck on. But if it's only one wheel, then either that brake caliper is stuck on because it's bad, or it's getting pressure that it shouldn't get and it sticks on. And here's how you can tell the difference. If the brake caliper itself is bad, jack it up, take the wheel off, and the brake caliper is stuck on. Brake calipers have a bleeder valve. Open the bleeder valve. If you open the bleeder valve and then it frees and spins, it's not the caliper. It's the master cylinder not releasing pressure, which is either the master cylinder has gone bad or the rubber brake hose. On old cars, rubber hoses collapse. And when you step on the brake, they'll stop. But when you release it, they're collapsed. And that tiny little bit of releasing, when you take your foot off, it's not much pressure. is isn't enough to suck the fluid out, and it'll stick on. So if you open the bleeder and it frees up, it's not the wheel cylinder. But if you do open the brake bleeder and it's still locked up, then you need a new wheel cylinder or if it's a disc brake system, get a whole new caliper. You can get rebuilt ones cheaply enough. They don't cost that much, and they work perfectly fine. They're just simple. They have seals and pistons. Places rebuild them all the time. Cool Buddy 28 says, is it worth replacing a 2011 Kia Sorento EX V6 head gasket? Well, here's the problem. It's a V6. Tremendous amount of work to replace a head gasket on a V6 correctly. The fours are bad enough, but a V configuration got twice as much. Do you know if it's just the head gasket? Sometimes the heads warp. They're aluminum, the blocks are aluminum, they can warp. You start rebuilding engines, you're getting into no man's land. I even had a customer years ago that I said, you don't want to put a head gasket on a car, the engine's not worth it. They said, well, I want you to. So I put a head gasket on it, fixed the head gasket, but now it was burning oil like mad. And they said, why is it burning oil? I said, because you got an old car and the only thing you did was put a head gasket. That increased the pressure of the engine. And then the piston rings, which were worn, are now burning a lot of oil. Once you start taking an engine apart, it's like a Swiss watch. You don't do one thing. You got to do a whole bunch of things, and it's so much money. Something like that, I find, if you really want to try to keep the car, gamble with a used engine from a junkyard that was in a wreck that maybe a high speed wreck showing it was working pretty good, you know, and if the engine wasn't bashed, probably still working good. I'd do that rather than take one of those Kia V6s apart. You got a better chance of it working than you do trying to fix it because there's too many things that get them wrong when they're worn. Jack Koo 69 says, Scott, I got an 08 Honda Civic, 222,000 miles. PO420, that's the code for inefficient catalytic converter. I used catalytic converter cleaner, check engine light, went away 500 miles later, came back. Well, you got a borderline cat. The cleaner helped it for 500, now it came back. If it runs perfectly fine, it's not going to hurt anything. If you get admissions in your area for emissions testing, it'll fail the emissions. You can't drive the car because you can't get your registration sticker. So, kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place there. If you don't care, try the cleaning again. If it goes away, when it's time to inspect it, clean it before it's inspection time and go your merry way. Now, if you don't mind doing a real job, sounds crazy, but it works, take the catalytic converter off, soak it in a bucket of warm water with dishwasher detergent in it. Wear it in, foam it all up, throw it in overnight. For some reason, that actually works. And I was told this by a 
catalytic converter salesman. He says, you know, you can actually clean them. And it does work. It's a pain in the butt. You got to pull the cat off, soak it overnight, clean it off, hose it all outside, let it dry, put it on. But it will often work in a borderline one like yours that goes back and forth. If you don't mind doing that kind of work, you can give that a try. John Rupert Maloney says, Scotty, what could be the reason my front driver's side brake pads are worn, but the passenger side still have lots of life? Yet? The rotors are fine. What's happening is the part that's worn is sticking on and it's wearing it out faster. The other side that isn't worn, it's normal. It's not sticking out. So it's like the side that's worn, it'd be like you driving with your foot on the brake. But it can't be you putting your foot on the brake because then both sides would wear, right? What's happening is that side is sticking. Now, some of the cars, the cheaper made ones, like a lot of Fords, have these slide calipers with these slide pins. You can take them off, grease them, or if they're old and rusty, buy the new slide pins, put them in, put the brake lube on them, put it back together and it won't slide. But these days, you can get remanufactured whole caliper assemblies with the brackets cheaply enough at places like AutoZone O'Reilly. They're not that hard to rebuild. It's pretty easy for these companies to rebuild them and then just put a new caliper on the side that's wearing out. Now, fanatics say you got to change them in pairs, but I mean, hey, you can change the bad one. If the good one still works fine, then take it on a road test and slam on the bricks. And if it doesn't pull the one side or the other, then they're still working evenly. If it does pull, then you'd have to buy the other side and change it in a pair. But you don't necessarily have to change them if one side's worn and the other side isn't. Aaron Autumn says, I got a 94 Pontiac Grand Prix with a small leak in the intake manifold gaskets leaking externally and not internally. If it had a leak and it was a vacuum leak, it'd be sucking it in. That would be internal, right? So what you can do with that is, let's say it's coolant. The bar's leak works fantastic for that. I fixed a car the other day with that. It was leaking and you could see the coolant coming out. We put the bar's leak, we drove it for 20 minutes, came back, the leak was gone. The stuff's amazing for that. Now, if it's an oil leak, you're going to have to take it apart and replace the gasket. Nothing's going to fix an oil leak. I know people say, but Scotty, you say the AT205 can fix oil seal leaks. Well, that's different because it's a seal and a shaft is spinning on the seal and it can rejuvenate the seal rubber and the spring on the seal holds it in and it can stop leaking. But a gasket's just there and if it's cracked and leaking, you got to replace the gasket if it's leaking oil. But if it's coolant, that bar's leak sealer worked quite well. Rufina Cologne says, what are your thoughts on F1 going for two-stroke engines? The thing is, two-stroke engines, they polluted like mad. That's why they got rid of mixed oil with gas. They burnt, they smoked, they stunk, right? But they were real fast. Modern ones, they've redesigned everything so that they don't pollute. It's completely different kinds of engines. If they are going, going to go two-stroke engines, it's less weight. And those guys are screaming race cars. They're going 200-something miles an hour, and they need a little bit less weight is a better thing for them. The problem is the things generally wear out faster, too. Now, what do they care? You know, they get so many engines a year, and they replace them after so many miles or when they wear out, right? It's not like we're going to be driving two-strokers around. If a guy's happy to get 500 miles out of a race engine, well, you're going to buy a car and, oh, I got 500 miles out of that engine. That was okay, you know? No, it's a completely different world. The engines they use in those have nothing to do with the stuff you see on the street, regardless of them BS and, oh, well, this is a modern technology in your car. No, it isn't. They use technology that they only ever use in those races, special gas, special oil, special everything. So don't think that any of that stuff is going to carry on. We'll be driving two-stroke cars. I really doubt it. Mr. G says, what's the easiest way to replace an oil pan gasket without removing the tranny or lifting the motor in an 86? 2.9 Ford Ranger two-wheel drive. Well, you can take some of the suspension parts off. You know, it's that's still a lot of work too. I mean, that's just the way that it goes. I find the easiest is to lift the engine. I got a cherry picker. You know, you got the engine hauler. You hook it up and you pick the engine up. Now, normally you'll jack an engine up with a board sitting on the oil pan. Well, you can't do that if you're taking the oil pan off, right? To put a gasket in. So you got to pick it from the top. That is the fastest way. And some of these Harbor Freight ones, like I got, I think I paid 150 bucks for that, and it works perfectly fine or there's places you can rent a cherry picker but if not you got to take suspension parts off it's also a lot of work you're talking about an 86 Ford you start taking those suspension parts off they're probably rusted it might break and snap off you're really better pulling the engine up in the air with the motor mounts than anything else because that old you start on bolting body parts suspension parts a lot of them are probably rusted they might break Aiden Dockers says Scotty after two different ignition coil changes on cylinders two and three that were misfiring now I'm getting misfiring on cylinder number one on a 2018 T Tiguan with 44,000 miles. What causes the coils to go bad? Cheap Volkswagen production. Volkswagen has had nothing but problem with coil on plug ignition systems because they make theirs cheap. And that's just the way that it goes. If I owned a Volkswagen, I never will because they're junk. For an old Beetle that's simple and kind of fun, you know. You got one of those, buy a set of coil packs. 
buy aftermarket ones that are better made and you want any problems. Did you, you see Toyota's Hondas going through coil packs? No, you don't. But the Volkswagens do because they're just cheaply made. They do not make them very well and they go out. What do you got? 44,000 miles and they go out. I see Toyotas with 340,000 miles. They still got the original ones on and they work perfectly fine. It's just cheap production by Volkswagen. Mega Mix Haiku says, I've seen your name written in Russian language. I want to see what it looks like. Now, I do have a Russian hat, one of their Tommy hats with the red star. My son got it when he was in Afghanistan with the 101st Airborne. So I have a little one of those cool little rusky hats with the star on it and everything, the red star and the hammer and sickle. It's pretty cool, I gotta say. A friend of mine, uh, Dave, up in Canada, he's a scream. I sent him a picture of it. So then he's a photographer and he does all kinds of fancy stuff with pictures. So he sent me back a picture of me being the commissar in World War II with all these Russians around a big fire out in the woods. And he's got me with the commie hat on stuck in there. He did a good job. It was really funny. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.